Cramping does what? That's a stupid question. Cramping doesn't have, is that a stupid question? Can't finish the hamstring exercise without cramping. Up your salt intake. Cramping does what? That's a stupid question. Cramping doesn't have, is that a stupid question? Cram cramping doesn't have anything to do with, with like, ex I mean, it does have stuff to do with exertion, but it's like if you're, if you have muscles that cramp, like my brachioradialysis, oh, brachioradialysis is whatever, they always cramp at work because I'm, I'm constantly squeezing like tin snips, a hammer, whatever. But I, I put salt in, in my gallon of water and I keep iodized salt in my car. So if I'm like really cramping, I will literally just take a swig of water and go like, ah, and just chug some salt, you know? It's like, it's disgusting and like probably people are like, oh, blood pressure and whatever. But it's like, if you don't want to cramp, up your salt intake. And then if that doesn't work, maybe look into potassium or magnesium and then get your hamstring stronger. Cause if they're cramping that much, they're probably really terrifyingly weak also. Yeah, I mean, cramping is, as Joe said, is, is it's a nutritional issue if it's happening during training. You know, cause if you're weak, you're, you're either gonna try to do 10 reps and only get six, you know, or your movement's just gonna suck because your hands are not strings are not able to handle whatever load that's being done at. Now, if you train legs really hard and then later that night when you're laying in bed, you know, your hamstrings start to lock up, that, yeah, that could be, it's, I still believe it's nutritional and it can be avoided if you just, not a lazy ass, but I get it. You know, I've trained legs so hard, sometimes I go home and just lay in bed for 16 hours, but I always cramp if I do that. And it's because I wasn't fucking moving. There's no blood in there. Or drinking water. Or, or anything, drinking water yeah. or anything else where it could have easily been combated instead of me just taking like a Soma or you know, a muscle relaxer to, to keep it from cramping. But that's me, you know, being me. But um, I, I wouldn't even say that it's a sign of weakness. The sign of weakness of the hamstrings is going to be more the movement pattern, kind of as, as Joe talked about in one of the other questions. And... If your hamstrings are just pathetically weak compared to other people who are your same strength. So if you do RDLs or you do stiff leg deadlifts and you know another guy or girl or what whatnot who's about your same weight class, about your same strength, but their RDLs and stiff legs are like 150 pounds more than yours, odds are your hamstrings probably suck or lower back or assuming that the form and technique is the same. You know, that's, that's always a dead giveaway on what a weak body part is. Now, there's the whole other side of the story, and that is, does it matter? You know, because if, if your lifts are going up, then maybe it needs to be weak for your lift to go up. You make it stronger, and you're a quad dominant lifter, and now it starts shifting too much to the hamstrings. Your knees are going to start to hurt, and you're going to have other issues. So you got to understand the style as well. That's... This isn't even a question, but that's a good lead in to just talking about like making making your strength stronger. Like there are so many people out there that are always constantly like trying to find like, oh, this is my weak body part. I need to make this better. Like I'm quad dominant. I need to get my posterior chain stronger. I'm I my back is huge. Like my spinal erectors are massive. I I, I use my back to stabilize too much. I need to. I need to f like fix and be like have more upright torso position and whatever and it's like I don't really think that's the case most of the time because you can just look at li other lifters out there even if they're outliers like look at uh Steve Goggins you know his squat was a freaking like his his ass is like 18 inches behind his head because he's bent over so much when he's squatting but looking at him his legs are like as long as my torso and his back was like thicker than the table, you know, it's, it's, you, it, if you, if it works for you, and I like the way you put it, it's, if you make that weak part stronger, it may have a negative effect on your lifts, or it may take away from your other lifts, like make your strength stronger. Like if you're quad dominant, there's a reason I don't use super cast like wraps when I squat, because I, 
I rebound like a mother out of the hole, you know? It's, I have a lot of knee flexion and I have really big quads and I have really strong quads and a really strong torso to keep me upright. So I use it, I keep, play it to my advantage. There's a reason I don't squat like uh, the typical uh, conjugate style guys, wide stance, hinge dominant. Like my hips are not that great compared to my quads. So why not use them? You know, that's, I, I, I may screw the order of this up a little bit, at least the form and style, but Ricky Crane wrote years ago that there's technique, form, and style. And I saw him present on this one time at uh, Swiss, one of the very first ones. And it made a lot of sense. I, I was never able to really put it together until I heard him say that and then read about it a little bit. Technique is basically what you're going to see textbook. All right, that, that's what it is. Very few people are going to have the perfect technique. Then they're gonna have form. Form's gonna change that technique to actually biomechanically be what's best for their body. And then each person's gonna develop their own style from that. You know, what they need to do that's gonna utilize their own strengths, you know, and from there be able to bring up the weak points. So as somebody that's watched lifts for most of my life, I, I can't say, I have to take all that into consideration when I watch somebody squat. You know, I can sit there and have a biased view and say, oh fuck, his knee is not right over his heel and he's not sitting way back. Well, the person may not be built for it, it may not be their style, it may not accommodate their strength points. If I put them back there, then they're gonna fucking fall over. And you know, in, you know long term, will it turn around and actually be stronger? Maybe, but what is their, biomechanics you know what is all the other you got to look you, you look at them and you can see I mean you can see when the way somebody is squatting and I use that as an example because that's that's the one that's the most fucked up but it's also the one that when done right is so fluid it's ridiculous it's like wow you can tell when it's done right and when it's done right even if the knees are not where you want or this is not where you want or who gives a fuck because it's playing into, it's their form and style. Damn, I didn't think we'd get all that from the uh, salt question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, the best yeah. stuff comes from the other shit. <laughs>